Hey guys, and welcome to another Game Explain discussion. I'm your host, Derek Bittner, and I'm joined today by Chugga Conroy to discuss the recent Nintendo Direct trailer for Xenoblade Chronicles X. So, Chugga, what'd you think? Do you even really have to ask at this point? No, oh yeah, yeah, I, I, I should know by now. You you absolutely hated it. It was the worst thing you've ever seen. Uh, complete betrayal to everything that was in the original Xenoblade Chronicles. I'm, I'm, I'm right about that, right? Exactly. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> no, in all seriousness, it looked really good. Um, actually, an improvement from the stuff that we saw at E3, which is saying quite a bit, though, because I already thought it looked pretty good back then. Mm-hmm. No, it looks it looks fantastic, and it's surprising, too, because they didn't show any of the mech stuff off uh, yet again. It, it, kept, it was actually a rather short trailer. Yeah, there was no mech gameplay shown off at all. Plus, they also kept it confined to the first area, even still. Mm-hmm. It, it seems like they really want to make the majority of this game a complete surprise for people which is fine because that first area is freaking huge so i think even that would just take you know upwards of 10 hours or more to actually check out it is like i think across all the trailers we've only seen like two areas that are not that first area at all and like both of them we saw for only a couple seconds yeah it's it's incredible how big this game is and i you know I really like this, the overall goal that they gave for this game as far as like what the story will be in that it's, yeah, you got, you got this whole alien war going on. You had to, got, had to leave Earth. You're setting up a new colony on this unknown planet. But it's not the typical RPG type thing where you're trying to defeat somebody who's trying to, disor- to destroy the world, even though that probably will end up being the case here. On the outset, you're just trying to catalog this planet and get every, everything basically hospitable for humans which is a very unique kind of uh, storyline for an RPG. Yeah, and in the process, you're having to also like rebuild humanity. As they've said before, one of your objectives is going to be going out and finding stasis pods that uh, the humans are in and bring them back to your colony so that you can uh, fulfill more jobs that need to be completed. For instance, at first, there would just be military personnel in the town, though, but over time, you would get people that have other sets of skills, like farmers and things like that, just so that you can rebuild society. Yeah, that's awesome. That's almost like a you know a bit of a sim game almost, trying to just decide where how you want uh, New Los Angeles to form and uh, grow. And I'm sure each one will have ben- direct benefits to your character, your party. Um, like if you get a lot of weaponsmiths, for example, you'll have all kinds of uh, new weapons to get. Maybe if you get the farmers, get new items to buy, that sort of thing. It's It's a really cool system. It sounds like Colony 6. Let's just hope that the items you actually get from it are actually good this time around from the stores, though, because I don't know if you've heard my rants on it. The stores in Colony 6 are useless, like, most of the time. Like, the items they give you for that are just terrible. Oh, jeez. Since it's a central theme, I hope so. (laughs) Yeah, I hope so, too. But speaking of everything being centralized around New Los Angeles and trying to rebuild humanity and all those things, Mm -hmm. I have to wonder if New Los Angeles is going to be the only town in the game, because... Mira is a completely uncharted planet, but at the same time, could there be life there already? Could there be interplanetary travel, perhaps? Like, it would seem kind of weird to just have one town in the entire game, but at the same time, I don't really see, like, how they could have another one. Well, I mean, you pointed out something to me before we started this discussion, where you've seen uh, other alien races in one of the screens from the... uh, from the trailer where they're walking down the street and you can see the army pizza on the other side. You saw two other alien races. Yeah, we have those pink guys that are, like, jumping up and down, and they have, like, tentacles sticking off the back of their heads. Then we got, like, some blue guy who's, like, mega tall and muscular, and that's in addition to other alien races that we've seen. Um, In the the trailer from E3 this year, we had that one alien race uh, that had, like, the horns on the side of their face. Uh, There was, like, this blue girl that was flying around in a mech, and then there was a red guy named uh, Luke Zal who was, like, running up a wall with a sword or something like that. And then in addition to that, we had, like, that cat lady that had, like, that mask over her face, and she was definitely, like, completely different from everything we've seen so far. So in total, that's four alien races plus the Nopon plus the humans, so that's six now. Mm -hmm. And it's completely possible that each of these races have their own town. It's just the human ones are, you know, is the first one you start out with since you are human. Uh, But it is interesting, you know, with this whole intergalactic war going on that, you know, Aliens are just sort of walking around just regular citizens. So I want it, there seems to be some integration on Earth even before this war started. Uh, 
that would be my first guess and explanation as to why there's all these different species walking around. Yeah, I was wondering about that, if maybe there's like some kind of galactic alliance that Earth was part of or something like that. I'm just starting to sound like Buzz Lightyear at this point when I say <laughs> that. <laughs> Actually, you could almost act like Buzz Lightyear on this planet. <laughs> hey, you can name your character Buzz, and you can like make him have like green clothes and everything like that. Oh, that'd be perfect. Yeah, th there you go, make Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> yeah, just make Buzz Lightyear in the character customization. As you were saying before, the game looks so much better than it did at E3, and I didn't even notice it that much. I knew it, I knew it still looked good, but I hadn't compared the two uh, until you pointed it out to me, and you showed me this uh, comparison picture of the uh, tower of New Los Angeles, where the little percentage is uh, shown, and the fidelity for this new one, this new trailer, is incredible. It looks like, just like so you made everything clear, defined, detailed. It looks amazing. They somehow, yeah, the textures are much higher resolution than they were before. There's just a lot more detail on everything. And it just kind of shows you how far it's come in about a year of development because um, the, tr the before picture is from E3 2013, so uh, over a year ago at this point, and the new picture is what it was looking like at the Nintendo Direct just this week. So in just that amount of time, they've added that much more detail, and it's funny because everybody was going on and on about like um, how it looked at E3 2013, just being like, haha, all the people that said the Wii U was like so underpowered and wouldn't be able to do anything, look at this, <laughs> but it looks so much better than that now. Yeah, I mean, the Wii U is proving itself to be quite a graphical powerhouse when the art direction is really used to the full effect. I mean, this game looks gorgeous, uh, the character designs are really good. Um, very detailed, but also have a more of a stylized look to them. And I just, I just love how it's all coming together. I'm, I am really getting excited more and more for this game with each trailer we get, even though, on the whole, we don't know that much about it. We know the first area. We know very little in the way of what the story is actually going to be like. We know just the exposition. It's kind of funny though because I saw this thing the other day, and I don't mean to be making any arguments. I don't mean to be making jabs at like any sort of you know, video game company or anything like that, because I, I like Nintendo, I like PlayStation, I like Xbox, I'm not, like, saying anyone's better than anyone else, though, but I remember that I saw this, um, just on a random Google search, I had a Yahoo Answers pop up the other day, and I remember seeing this guy on Yahoo Answers who bought an Xbox One, and he was, like, mega pissed off, and he was, like, <laughs> writing a question being, like, all these Xbox One games are coming out, and they're only 720p, yet the freaking Wii U is getting 1080p games like Bayonetta 2. What gives? <laughs> and, like, people, like, had to explain to him, like, how graphics versus resolution works. And he's like, yeah, but still, they can't do 1080p on the Xbox One. <laughs> like, it was, it was funny just how mad this guy was that, like, Smash Brothers and Bayonetta 2 were 1080p and 60 frames a second, yet all these Xbox One games coming out are, like, 720p, and he's just like, what the... <laughs> So, I don't mean to be making any jabs at anybody, though, but I just remember seeing that the other day, and seeing somebody mad about that, compared to everyone being like, the Wii U is so underpowered, and like, it won't be delivering, like, anything that looks remotely good, mm -hmm. it just, it's so funny seeing that now, because it's actually really proving itself to be a capable piece of hardware with everything that's been coming out this year. Oh, yeah, it's been a great year for it, I mean, the stuff coming out next year, which, of course, includes Xenoblade, uh, mm -hmm. is looking fantastic, I mean, it really looks like at least within Nintendo or the people that are making the notable games for Nintendo really understood that um, if we put a certain style to this and focus our right, the right attention on the right things, games can look fantastic on this. And yeah, it's still equal to the PS3 and the Xbox 360. And those games still look pretty good. It's still a little, you know, a little bit better than those, but yeah, it is better. I mean, um, I think the total specs is that the 360 was running on 512 megs of Ram. The Wii U's got two gigs. Oh, okay. So, yeah, there, there's a lot that it can do, and, you know, Xenoblade is absolutely pl proving it. I will say, though, that the thing that probably threw me off the most about this trailer was when they were actually walking around uh, New L.A. Uh, well, I guess specifically jumping around. Like, watch seeing the player character jump over the fences and, uh, like, almost like they were in Crackdown. And it's just this residential area in this RPG with all these fantastical monsters. I'm like, wow, talk about visual... Uh, whiplash. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've seen like some people saying that it reminded them of Grand Theft Auto and stuff like that, and it's kind of cool seeing that in a game that was designed in Japan. It really is true that 
Monolith was serious about combining the elements of Japanese and Western game design to kind of get the best of both worlds like they were doing in Xenoblade Chronicles. Because they, I think they've even stated that they want to be the Japanese equivalent of Bethesda, which that is really impressive. That's a really mm -hmm. ambitious goal. And it seems like they really are working towards that if you have just that big of a change in place when you're in towns. But um, one thing in that section of gameplay that I noticed was really funny when I was going through the trailer and I was pausing it, there's one part where he goes into the backyard of this one house where there's a pool and there's like this uh, girl like uh, laying by the pool tanning. <laughs> She's wearing a bikini with high heels on. <laughs> okay. I don't get what the wardrobe choice for that is though, but yeah, in the trailer footage, you can see that she's wearing high heels like while laying out by the pool and I'm like, what? Well, I guess you need some kind of shoes on so you don't burn your feet? I don't know. I, mean, I guess we don't understand like how the sun and temperature works in this new world, so maybe it's a safety precaution? <laughs> maybe. I don't know. Yes, you need heels. The <laughs> Wow, I didn't. I, yeah, I didn't notice that yet. But that is funny. But it, it really goes to show just how normal LA is, almost in a way, a weird way. It's so it's very familiar. Yet you got this whole strange world that everybody's running around in. Mm -hmm. It's I don't know. It, it, it's a very interesting combination to me, and I, I, I it makes me really want to explore it to see what's the same and what's different. Yeah, it gives them a lot of freedom as well, the fact that it's an alien world, and you can attribute things being different from our world and just being like, well, it's something they had to do to adapt as well. Exactly. Um, now, you, I think you told me that you had found out the characters' names that we see in this one uh, screenshot featuring this really buff guy. I don't think... I think he's just an NPC, according to you, but the, you got the other four characters, uh, their names, including what the default name for the uh, player character will be. Yes, actually. Um, the buff guy, like I said, I think he'll just be known from here on as some really buff guy, like people on Twitter were saying. But <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think he's a party member. He was not seen in the party at all. However, we had four characters in total that have been seen in the party at this point. We have Elma from E3 with the uh, white hair, and she's mo normally dressed in red. The interesting thing about Elma that some people are pointing out is that her eyes are completely different from everyone else's. She has like these three black rings and doesn't have any pupils in her eyes. Some people are wondering if she might be a different race in and of herself, or if she might be, like, um, you know, part some alien race, part human, or something like that. Mm -hmm. That is possible. It is possible. Uh, she also seems to be the forefront of rebuilding um, humanity, because she is the one that wakes you up from your stasis spot at the beginning of the game. Second, we have um, Rizo, who has the black hair. She was seen piloting a mech in the E3 trailer. And she has those two Monado hair clips, like, in her hair. I'm wondering, like, what that is, if that actually has a purpose or if it's just kind of a fun Easter egg. I have no idea. I found those, and I'm like, wow, that's an interesting... It's a really fascinating little Easter egg, and you almost wonder if there's anything more to it, but they're hair clips. I can't imagine there would be. <laughs> I don't know. The, um, the Blade Corporation in the game, like, as we've seen in the trailers, they manufacture something they call an artificial destiny emancipator, and it's been stated that... Your character has one of these, which is why you can customize them to be anything you want. Mm -hmm. So maybe she has one of those as well. I don't know. Maybe it just looks like the Monado. I don't know. Yeah, it could be. It could be an Easter egg or it could hint at further connections. There's really no way to tell at this point. Yeah. Uh, third, we have the Nopon party member, who is actually seen in the party at one point during this new video, so he is confirmed to be a member of the party. Uh, his name is Tatsu. What's interesting about that, though, is that uh, this is something that I'd heard rumors about, but I'd only actually confirmed it myself recently. There is a Nopon NPC in Xenoblade Chronicles that has those same googly glasses, and his Japanese name is Tatsu. He's green and he's green instead of yellow, though, so I doubt it's the same Nopon, but it might be a clever reference, or perhaps maybe if this is a direct sequel, he could be like a descendant of that character, or something like Tatsu Jr. or Tatsu the Third, or something like that. I don't know. But I found that really interesting that he has the same name as an NPC, and in fact, in some European localizations, such as the French one, uh, he is localized as Tatsu over there as well. Yeah, it, it struck me as odd that we have so few connections to Xenoblade Chronicles, yet the Nopon are back. Yeah, the Nopon are back, so they're one of the races that we're going to have. Um, as far as I know, the people that we're going to be playing as are just known as humans, they're not Homs or anything like that, so it's not going to be connected in that way. But uh, speaking of who we're going to be playing as, the hero that you can play as, you can customize everything about them. They can be either gender, they can have different skin colors, hair colors, eye colors, height, weight, everything. Like, it's crazy how deep the customization is, as we saw at E3. But the character's default name is Cross, or Kurasu, if you want to get really technical, which <laughs> the Japanese title of the game is Xenoblade Cross, so that does make sense. Yeah, it, it perfectly works, and I kind of like the fact that they gave him a default name, because... I never, like, really put my name in it. It always feels unnatural in the game world. <laughs> yeah, just like, Cross, you need to rebuild humanity, compared to 
Derek, you need to rebuild humanity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just it doesn't sound right to me. It just, it just doesn't. I can't put my mind in it, in that. I, I actually have more trouble putting my mind into the character if it's my name. Yeah, it just, like, I can't really feel as immersed into it, though, because it just feels kind of, like, cheesy and breaking the fourth wall when they're just telling me by name to do stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, that's kind of why I, I think when I played Fire Emblem Awakening, I tried playing with my character named Emil, and then I just restarted, because I'm just like, no, I gotta name him something else, I just can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I, I mean, it's interesting, I don't, I doubt they'll refer to him, they'll probably do the trick they used in Final Fantasy X, where they talk to your character, and he... Maybe he talks back. We have never seen him talk yet, so that might not be the case. But I kind of hope it's like a Tita situation uh, in 10 where he talks and has a character. It's just, you know, you can customize how he looks, what he sounds like, and all that. Yeah, and they just refer to him as you or him in cutscenes and stuff like that. Or yeah. Her. On that note, the closest thing to him talking that we've seen is that there's one point in the uh, E3 Treehouse footage where the uh, player has to answer a question. And you do have freedom in what you want to say, kind of like in a Mass Effect game. Mm -hmm. But when you answer the question, your character doesn't verbally say what you've answered. They just kind of nod, and then the other character's like, oh, yeah, right. Like, you know, they just react to what you just answered. Uh, uh, and then in addition to that, you can actually choose a voice for your character in the character customization. But the only time we've seen it come into play is uh, during battle, whenever they call out their attacks and things like that, they will use the voice that you chose. Mm. Yeah, that's... That's what I have a feeling it's probably going to just be limited to. I, I'd love to see more, but, you know, if they have how many different voices between both genders, that's probably a lot of dialogue to record. I, th I think it was four voice actors per gender. Yeah, that's all. To have all four of them, all, well, all eight of them uh, record every every line as yeah. well. That's a lot to do. I mean, yeah, Saints Row the Third did it in Saints Row Four, and all you know, all the Saints Row games did that sort of thing. But I don't think there's quite as much dialogue in that game as there is in this. <laughs> yeah, considering that in the original Xenoblade Chronicles, I've seen um, sound rips of like all the different voice clips of characters talking during battle. Just for one character, the number of voice clips that they have that they can say during battle it totals about ten minutes of audio. Jeez. So <laughs> for just one character, it's that already. That is insane. So, yeah, there's already just that much. Just with battles between eight characters right there is 80 minutes, so almost an hour and a half. And, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Now, one of the other things that actually, the trailer showed off is our first look at some of the Wii U features, specifically with the gamepad. And it's some sort of, like, map with a lot of symbols around, I guess, to help clarify where things are... You know what? What things are where? I didn't get a chance to like really absorb the the symbols or anything like that. But I assume you probably you know poured over that thing to see if you. You bet know. I have. <laughs> <laughs> so what'd you find? Okay, well, um, we have a few different options that are on the uh, top bar on the menu. Mm -hmm. We have segment mode, which is what's seen in the footage, where it seems like the world just divided up in all these hexagons, and you can just kind of tap on them for information. It'll show you, like, if there's a monster there you need to kill for a quest or something along those lines. It seems like you might be able to skip travel to some of them by just tapping on the gamepad instead of having to open up a separate menu. That's under the Union Gallery mode that we see on the top bar. There's also uh, one that says Reward, one that says Result, one that says Start, and then there's two blank spots indicating there might be more functions that'll be added to the gamepad later. And then inside of the Union Gallery mode that we actually are in with all the hexagons, you're able to zoom in and zoom out on the map, all those things. But interestingly, on the right side of the screen, there is a keyboard option. And we saw like a chat window in the first ever trailer for this game, which, holy crap, that was like two years ago now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, in the first ever trailer for this game, we saw a chat window. But it was never, ever brought back. But we now have this keyboard icon on the gamepad hinting that that might not have been removed from the game. And not only that, if you go to Nintendo's um, web official website for the game on like their E3 pages, mm -hmm. it will say number of players to be determined. Interesting. So they're actually looking into doing some sort of multiplayer mode. I hard to say exactly to what degree... Yeah, it would be really cool if you could have, like, all the players be uh, controlled by a human, because like I've said, in Xenoblade Chronicles, sometimes the AI is not that good. Like, every now and again, it, you'll, you'll have, like, these characters, like uh, Melia, for instance. She is amazing if you play as her, but she is utterly useless if you have the AI controller. They are so <laughs> bad at using her effectively. Oh, man. So that'd be really nice. Um, second icon down it looks to be the quest log icon from Xenoblade Chronicles, which uh, Takahashi has let it slip in an interview already. 
that you'll be able to use the gamepad for quest organization and things like that. Plus, we've also seen that your quest objectives will be on a checklist on the right side of the uh, TV. Mm -hmm. So it seems like you'll have that as a bit of a companion for your quest, so you can look through the different things that you could be doing and all those things without having to go into a separate menu. Third icon down is fairly obvious. You can switch the TV and the gamepad. And then the fourth one, I don't really get it. You have some guy shaking his fist while yelling. Okay. I don't really understand it. Maybe voice activation? I don't know. Like... They've said that you can command your AI a lot more freely in this game, like you can like give them a lot more orders. Maybe it'll be that you can say what you want them to do rather than use buttons. That's my best theory that I got. It's just like, I don't know, he's just like, he's got his hand on his hip, he's like shaking his fist, and he's like, oh, you rotten <laughs> kids! I don't know. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't get it, but I, I will say that all this functionality is, I mean, it's probably the most functionality we've seen out of the gamepad for a single game in a long time and it all seems very useful it's all about organization talking to other players potentially uh, and just getting all that information at your fingertips just by glancing down and still being able to play the game and i really like that it's really cool though because um i thought that uh, i was actually a little worried that they were just going to ignore the gamepad completely because xenoblade chronicles did not touch motion controls whatsoever that mm -hmm. game does not have any option to even use motion controls it's flat out entirely buttons even if you use the wiimote yeah it's, uh, I mean, I felt like that was a fine choice, but I think uh, game the gamepad works better as an option for an RPG because of, well, stuff like this, where you can organize your quests and still, like, make progress moving along. You don't have to go to a menu and organize it. You can just sort of push your button in a you know, control pad in a dist uh, direction and just organize stuff as you're going along. So Yeah, it's really quick and easy. And uh, I've seen some people worried that, based on like the more recent footage, that the game is going to be more about the quest than about the story, though. But I think that's just more so that they don't want to reveal many details of the story, because they did say that they didn't want to talk story until the game had been out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, and they mentioned story quests. So there's definitely an overarching plot. You're not just going out there doing side quests for people, building up your new Los Angeles and going from there and just getting being able to go further and further this isn't uh, monster hunter this is still i mean this is this is monolith soft they're known for their stories uh, they might be a little excessive at times in the xenosaga sense but they, they are love their plot twists oh yes so i i'd be shocked if there wasn't a pretty in-depth story for uh xenoblade chronicles x mm-hmm but I guess the only other thing we can mention, uh, well, one of the other things we can mention uh, before we wrap it up, is the fact that we still don't have an official release date for it yet. All we have is the vague 2015, which is interesting in comparison to both, uh, to every other game that was shown off during this Direct, where either they were given a spring or second quarter uh, 2015 release date. Or even an outright month. Yeah, exactly. So for Xenoblade Chronicles to only get 2015, that makes me think that at the earliest it might be third quarter, so around September or so, or maybe even later. Maybe it could even get pushed back to 2016. Uh, Iwata did say, like, we're aiming for a 2015 release, and that worries me, mm. making it sound like it might not come, though. But uh, one thing that I wanted to say... Um, about the release date is that even though they didn't drop a proper date, I'm actually still wondering if it might not be that far off. You think? The reason why I say that is that at the beginning of the show, when the ESRB ratings came up, there was mm -hmm. not E to rating pending, it was E to teen, implying that every game in the show has been given a final rating. And I don't know about you, but I didn't see any other games that were shown that day that could have gotten a T rating. No, not really. Uh, you had Majora's Mask, you had Splatoon, you had um, Captain Toad. Yeah, and I, we know for a fact that uh, Majora's Mask is only an E10+. plus. Yeah, so like everything else was E or E10+, plus, almost certainly, yet the ESRB rating at the start of the show showed a T rating, implying that every game in the show has been given an official rating, and if it's been given an official rating, that means they have a near-finished build of the game, or at least the content of what's going to be in it has been finalized and rated. Yeah, and they did They did have, you know, even though we couldn't play it at E3, they did. it was the full game, or it yeah. was a complete build of the game, I guess. It seemed like E3. a complete build, because they wouldn't let us go hands-on with it. They would only let people at Nintendo play it uh, to, for demonstration purposes, and they weren't allowed to go beyond a certain point, even though the game would allow them to, and the title screen was not like demo version or anything like that, it just said Xenoblade Chronicles X. Yeah, I mean, this is such a big game that, it's, you know, they don't want to, probably don't want to waste the time making a demo for it, you know, it's just, let's get this done as quick, and you know, as best as we can, or as quickly as we can, and not, you know, divide our resources. So, you could be right, I mean, they, I guess they don't want to be specific in case 
you know something comes up or they need to adjust some things because it is such a huge game so i can only imagine the amount of play testing going into this Mm -hmm. so i don't know i i really hope it does come out 2015 because the game looks utterly fantastic i need Uh, it (laughs) and you know they even satiated you they on the website they gave you uh the full song for that they played during one of the trailers and that's that's we haven't even talked about that yet (laughs) yeah it's it's such a good song yeah, if you want to see it, go to xenobladex.jp, all one word. Yeah, it's it's the music is most definitely going to be just as good as it was in the uh, in Xenoblade Chronicles. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm glad to hear that it's sounding so good though, because they changed the composers completely. Oh really? I didn't realize that. Yeah, as far as I know, none of the composers from Xenoblade Chronicles are making a return. It's just um, Sawano, who is a really big um, anime composer. He's done a lot of anime and movies. I think this is his first game that he's worked on, though. But the thing is, this game has taken so long to get released that he's actually worked on another game soundtrack that's already been released. So it's like, even though it was the first one that he worked on, it's the second one that's actually getting released. (laughs) That's kind of funny. Oh boy, it just it just show, goes to show how long it takes to make a game of this size. Yeah. But uh, any final thoughts on the game? Uh, things you're hoping for? Things you didn't uh, quite get to discuss? I think I've pretty much covered everything. All I can really say is I hope they really surprise me with the story once more. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the big hope there. Is just make it fun, make it work, make it feel like a true sequel to Xenoblade Chronicles. And who knows, maybe there will be some more connections to the original. It's it's interesting that they took in a direction where it just feels like a completely new universe, really. A universe. Ha. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, I think that about covers it for all of our impressions of Xenoblade Chronicles X from the recent Nintendo Direct. So thank you guys for watching. And if you like this video, be sure to like us on Facebook and Twitter at Game Explained. And of course, check out Chugga's channel. Who as he's currently covering the original Xenoblade Chronicles and going really in depth, as you can see just from his uh, him looking into the trailer for X. <laughs> uh, so thank you again, Chugga, for being with me. Thank you so much for having me. Yep. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned to Game Explain for more on Xenoblade Chronicles and other things gaming too. Until next time, guys. Bye. <laughs>